Hello and welcome to another edition of Ten Buck Test Bench. And Mike, you'll be happy to see my bench cookies in the background here. I did a complete video on building this unit the other day, or the other day, yeah, last month. And this is billed as a do-it-yourself kit, digital secometer, capacitance meter, inductance meter, frequency meter. Now they're using a pretty broad interpretation of secometer, secometer, because uh, that's an instrument for measuring the coefficient of electrical self-induction and the fact that it measures inductors. I guess they could sneak that in there, but just call it an LCR meter, guys. I had great hopes for this when I purchased it. Uh, it was a nice looking kit. It did LCR functions. It was billed as, well, here's the specifications. Uh, 0.1 microhenry to 1 henry, uh, small capacitance, 1 picofarad to 2.2 microfarads, frequency 20 hertz to 400 kilohertz, and electrolytic capacitors from 0.5 microfarad to 12,000 microfarad. And I thought, now here's going to be a useful kit for the young players. However, after I built this thing and the performance was so dismal, I shelved the video and uh, just figured I'd do another kit later on. However, I guess there's some value in knowing what doesn't work very well. And the reason I had such high hopes for this, it, it had a high parts count. Um, it had a lot of functionality. And at the heart of this thing, if I pull the display off of here, come on. Oh, I got another screw I have to loosen up ever so slightly. A couple of the threads caught. At the heart of this thing is an Atmel 89S52 microcontroller with 8K of onboard flash memory. And uh, if the programmer's done his job properly, this little guy ought to be capable of easily measuring LCR. And so I started building the kit, and there was a few glitches. Uh, you may notice there's a missing terminal strip right here, or terminal connector, screw connector. One of them was bad. The screw was so cross-threaded from the assembly process that you couldn't even loosen it. So I threw that away. I have a couple of capacitors uh, soldered on the pads. This is for the frequency measurement, and we'll see why those are there in a couple of minutes. Um, the unit has an onboard voltage regulator and a full bridge rectifier on the input. So you can feed this thing from like 9 to 20 or 30 volts, AC or DC, uh, DC of either polarity, and it'll work just fine because the bridge rectifier and the regulator will take care of everything else. You can also feed it directly with 5 volts. And that's what these two pins here on the back are for. You can uh, bypass all the regula uh, regulator and everything and feed it directly with 5 volts DC. Uh, yeah, why you would want to do that, I don't know. When you can use you know, pretty much a universal power connector, you can plug just about anything in over here to power it. The unit had two electrolytic capacitors mounted here, which I had to remove and put on the back of the unit. Fortunately, I had some standoffs. The reason I had to do that with them on the front, you couldn't put the LC uh, liquid crystal display, LCD display on here because the capacitors were way too tall and you couldn't plug in the connector. So I removed the two standoffs that were back here, similar to these put four standoffs of the same kind on the back, mounted the caps on the bottom, and now the uh, liquid crystal display fits, plugs into its socket, and I can put the two screws in and everything assembles together nicely. And it, again, you know, I had high hopes for this kit. It seemed like a very, very nice piece of kit, as the Brits would say. Plug it in, very nice backlit display, and I'm hoping this shows up without totally being washed out in the camera here. Oh, come on, focus. Focus, focus, focus. At any rate, I guess it's not going to cooperate today for some reason. Come on, guy. Hang on a minute, let me see if I can get the camera straightened out.
Well, I guess it's all right. It uh, just looks bad in the viewfinder of the camera. At any rate, it has a nice backlit display. There's a control here for adjusting the contrast of the display. And there's one other control here that I finally figured out was for adjusting the large capacitance range to get it to read accurately. The uh, unit has a bunch of push buttons. This is the on and off button. And I thought this thing had serious issues in the beginning. I found out that it does not like to have buttons pushed in. If, for, for instance, if the CX button is pushed in and you turn it on, a lot of times, oh, it booted that time. A lot of times it just would not boot. And it's probably going to make a liar out of me. Now, there you go. See, it didn't boot this time. It just refuses to start up. So if you shut it off, release all the push buttons, everything out except the power button, and turn it on, it usually boots up okay. There you go, FLC tester. However, when it came to the performance of this unit, it was pretty dismal. It's billed as reading small capacitance over here, from point or excuse me from one picofarad to 2.2 microfarad unfortunately that's not very true now we have some small capacitors over here i'm going to click on cx and hopefully this is going to be visible in the camera if i can get all the glare off of the display i can't really see if it's very clear or not in the camera i should go take a look at the video here briefly i'll be okay back. i've been farting around with this thing for five 15 minutes here trying to uh, get it to give you a clear display i've turned off all of the lights i even tried my polarizing filters and my color filters there's just the the contrast between this and the room lights but as you can see hopefully in these shots uh, it's an extremely clear well backlit display and I, you know, I couldn't have been happier with it. I'm going to turn the room lights back on here. And we'll get back on with the review and just deal with the fact that uh, it doesn't show up. So All right, I should also just... quickly mention, I've seen two different versions of this advertised on eBay. One of them has this inductor over here. And that's this uh, adver uh, advertisement or web page. You can see the inductor is over on the left-hand side. The other unit has the inductor between where this connector would be and this connector. It's right in this region, and here's the, uh, the page from that unit. You can see there's ever so slightly different uh, layout of the boards. However, if you go down and look at the photographs down at below, there's usually a selection of photographs. As you look through there, you'll see them switch between this one and the one that's here they'll use a combination of photographs so evidently they don't distinguish one between the other i was going to buy the other kit that has the inductor here and see if it performed any better but then i saw they were simply interchanging photographs and you know it was going to be a shooting match as to which one showed up on my doorstep now here's the problem i have with the unit i love the display and once you figure out how the buttons work uh, you can deal with that all right. I don't much care that the capacitors had to be mounted on the back. Big deal. That's not a big problem as far as I'm concerned. The problem is they claim it's good from one picofarad on up. Now, I have a bunch of capacitors here. I have a uh, one that's marked 6 picofarad, and I know for a fact it's 6.0 picofarad. I've measured that on my Booten laboratory bridge which is extremely accurate. So I'm going to put the six picofarad capacitor, actually before I even do that, I'm gonna take the capacitor back out of here. I'm gonna turn on the capacitance test function and hopefully you'll be able to see the display well enough. Right now it's reading all zeros, but if you sit here a while, it'll start to flicker between seven picofarads and zero. And of course it's not going to do it now. It's gonna make a total liar out of me now that I've got the camera running. I'm going to put in a known 6.07 picofarad capacitor. And bear in mind, they spec this down to one picofarad. Come on, get in there. 
I'm going to tighten the screws down. And let's see what we have for a reading. I'm seeing nothing. Whoop, there's seven picofarad. There's my seven picofarad flash that I told you about. Now, normally you'd think, well, that's not so bad. It's measuring one picofarad off. However, if I take the capacitor out of here, the chances are it's going to continue to flash that seven picofarads. Come on, do it. You've been doing it for days. All right, it's going to make a liar out of me this time. Let's put another capacitor in here. We have a 7.5 picofarad capacitor. And I know this is 7.51 picofarads. I've measured it on the Boonton. It also measures 7 picofarad, 7070. Is that a real reading? Anybody's guess. Let's go up in capacitance. We'll keep going up. And we have a 12 picofarad capacitor. Well, let's put that guy in here. And, and this 12 picofarad cap measures exactly 11.82 picofarads. I've measured these all on the lab bridge. 7 and 14. 7 and 14. Which reading is it? How would you know? How would somebody without a lab bridge know? And the idea is to come up with a unit that, you know, the young players can use with some level of confidence. This is not going to do it. We'll go up to a 47 picofarad capacitor. And uh, again, I've measured all of these on the bridge. I won't keep repeating that. This measures 44.25 picofarad on the bridge 42 picofarad so now we're getting close we're getting within a five percent tolerance so starting around 40 or 50 picofarad it seems to start reading but again it's jumping between 42 and 35 42 and 35 which one do you believe ah so not very good there we'll pull that out what have we got next? We've got a... There's a 100 picofarad capacitor. And this 100 picofarad is 100.05 picofarad. It's measuring 100 or 93. 100 or 93. How would you know? Um... We've got a 500 picofarad capacitor, which measures 499, 507. Now, you know, that's probably accurate enough once you're into this range, but there's no stability. And there's no way to zero this. There is no zero set. So if you get one and it's reading some value, when you go to start, you can't zero it out. So there's problem one. Problem number two, inductance. The second set of terminals is for inductance. Here I have a 10 millihenry coil. Let's put this guy in here, and I've measured this on other equipment again. And we'll snug the screws up. Click it on here excuse me, 10 microhenry, not millihenry, 10 microhenry coil. So it's reading 10.1 microhenries. Not bad. Now the range is supposed to be, let me look back here so I don't mess this up, it's supposed to be 0.1 microhenries to 1 henry. Now that would be fairly useful getting up into the higher ranges. So there's 10 microhenries and it's working on on 10 microhenries. Bear in mind, it's supposed to be able to go up to one henry. Here's 100 microhenries. I'm gonna put this guy in. And... Nothing. All zeros across here. Doesn't respond whatsoever. Absolutely useless. We'll go to this is uh, 
This is one millihenry. This coil is supposed to be one millihenry. Reads one microhenry or seven tenths of a microhenry, and I know it's one millihenry. Worthless. Now we can come over here. I'm going to release that button. We'll come over here to the large capacitance size. And we'll put in a 100 microfarad electrolytic. And it's marked positive minus. That's how you know this is the uh, electrolytic side where you would measure electrolytic capacitors. Put this guy in. Turn on the small capacitor. 105. Now, I think small capacitors up to like a couple hundred uh, microfarads. They don't really tell you. But it measures 105 microfarads. Close enough. And it's, you know, most electrolytics are 20%. So if it's reading that, fine. Here we have a 2200. And remember, this is good up to 12,000 microfarad. So we have a 2200 which I'll measure on the large scale because that's a much larger capacitor. So we'll screw that in, shut off the small cap function, turn on the big cap function, and it's measuring 2,800. It's marked as 2,200. I don't have any other capacitor meter that, you know, accurately measures this. I have a, a Chinese, another Chinese unit that says it's 2,400, and it's... it's um, spec or uh, its value is 2200 close enough for an electrolytic of that size we really don't care once we get up into this range as long as it meets the minimum value so good enough for electrolytics so is it any good for electrolytics seemingly okay it's certainly no good for inductance and i can't trust it in the picofarad range oh boy let me get okay and the last test we're going to do is the, the frequency counter now i mentioned earlier these two capacitors i'll come you know we'll come around to why that's doing that this is the little board we built in our last video that's the function generator sine square triangle wave and as i mentioned in the video there is no buffering on the output of this and in fact there's a six volt dc bias between the sine wave output and the um, common or the ground so you wouldn't want you would not want to short circuit those two pins so you're going to want to run a capacitor on the output of this to isolate that dc so that you don't overheat the transistors inside of here that are producing the sine wave or burn them up for that matter i don't know how much current it's going to draw i haven't looked there's no schematic i'm assuming there's some resistance between here and ground or here in the output but no DC isolation. Also, I found I'm running on a common power supply between these two units, and I found there's a 3 volt bias between the ground here and the ground here. So, one of these two units is actually floating above ground by 3 volts. <clears throat> and I didn't pay any attention to which was which. I just did a quick check and I said, I'm going to put some capacitors in between here so that we isolate the two units and don't burn anything out. That's always good advice when you're connecting two things up on a common power supply anyway. If they're running an AC signal, go through a capacitor. Put some isolation in there so you don't have any uh, disasters. At any rate, this unit was rated from 20 hertz. Uh, let's see what the spec is. 20 hertz to 400 kilohertz. And as we can see, we're putting out... Remember, this unit was rated from 50 hertz and okay why do i have nothing showing all of a sudden here why is my signal gone this was working earlier i'm going to shut this thing off and restart it and it's booted there we go now it appears to be working all right with this turned all the way down we're looking at 48 hertz. Now I'm sure it'll go down to 20 hertz. Going in the low region is always easier than going higher. And as we roll this thing up, it comes up to 724 hertz. If we go to the high range, we have almost 7 kilohertz, 6930 hertz, and spin it all the way down on the high range, and we have a 454 hertz. So there's some overlap. 
454 on the lowest of the high and 723 on the highest of the low so this there's, there's a fair amount of overlap between those two so you can cover the entire range I have tested this all the way up to 400 kilohertz there is no way to net the crystal in there's no adjustment you could pad the crystal with a capacitor not worth the work if the rest of the unit's not functioning properly however and, and a quick round of tests at 400 kilohertz it was 210 hertz high I tested it until it failed it actually will display up to 470 kilohertz it falls on its face at 475 that's outside its spec so and, you know at least it met spec of 400 kilohertz uh, at 100 kilohertz it was 54 hertz high at a thousand hertz it's uh, six kilohertz high so it reads you know, it reads a thousand six at uh, 50 hertz at the low end of the range it's not bad at all um, at uh, 50 hertz it was plus or minus one of the least significant digit it would flash between you know 51 and uh, 49 so that's not bad at uh, 700 hertz again it was plus or minus one but once you get up to uh, or excuse me a thousand hertz it was six hertz not six kilohertz it was uh, at a thousand hertz it was uh, plus or minus two hertz at six kilohertz it's plus or minus two hertz at a hundred kilohertz it's 54 hertz high there that better I hope so hope that made sense so as a frequency counter and eh, it you know it does kind of work as a capacitance meter for um, electrolytics Eh, it kind of works from 100 picofarad up again it kind of works but it's certainly off of its spec by two orders of magnitude where it says it'll do one picofarad and it won't even start giving you accurate readings until close to 100 that's you know two two orders of magnitude that it's off or non-functional or it doesn't meet its spec how's that so we're going to build another one here shortly hopefully it'll be a better performer but i did want to cover this one quickly and uh hopefully save you some heartache and buying one of these and again it was a big big disappointment to me i had high hopes for this unit i'm the radio mechanic hope you found something useful in this video if you did please give us a thumbs up or subscribe and we'll see you again soon bye bye